Hello, my name is Jacob Avila of Core Ultrasound, and in this 5-Minute Sono video, I'm going to walk you through part 2 of the ultrasound artifacts, and they are A-lines, B-lines, and mirror artifacts. Now, let's first talk about A-lines. Now, what we're seeing here is we're seeing muscle, rib, rib, plural line, and then a bunch of artifact right here. And here's a cartoon representation of what A-lines are. Now, A-lines stand for air, and the way that they work is whenever you have, we'll say muscle or anything fluid-filled up here, right next to a uniform layer of air, the lungs right here, what happens is it creates a reflector for the sound. So one sound beam will come down, hit that air interface, and come back up. But what we'll see with A-lines is we'll see that, well, yes, one of them definitely comes down, takes, we'll say T amount of time for it to come back to the transducer. Another sound beam will come down and just basically bounce back and forth between the two. And we'll say it takes two T for that reflection to make it back to the transducer. So the ultrasound machine thinks there's another plural line down here because it took twice as long for that sound to make it back and so on and so forth. And that is how A lines are generated. The next artifact I want to talk about is another reverberation artifact called B lines. This right here is that pleural line. Here's the ribs, and you see these vertical hyperechoic artifacts that begin at the pleural line and extend all the way down to the bottom of the screen. These are these, which are B lines. Let's talk about how they're formed. So we have a fluid filled thing, let's just say that's the alveolus, surrounded by air filled alveoli. Remember, air reflects sound, whereas things that are fluid filled transmit sound very well. So what happens is a sound beam will come down and basically start bouncing back and forth between those fluid filled and air filled things, creating these little horizontal repetitive reverberation artifacts, which we interpret as these vertical artifacts that start at the plural line and move with respiration, these are what beelines look like. Now, beelines are not only seen in the lung, they can be seen in the bowel for basically the same reason. You have fluid-filled little sections right next to air-filled sections that creates that same environment to create a beeline. These are both examples of intestinal beelines. Here's an example of beelines not in the lungs. This is a heart, this is a little bit of a pericardial effusion, and then we have a little bit of air in that pericardial effusion creating these beelines. This is actually from hemopericardium. In this example, I wanna show you a related artifact called a comma tail artifact. This right here is a gallbladder. We have a little bit of a thickened wall. We have maybe some cholesterol crystals that are in the anterior wall, and we're getting this short little vertical artifact right here. This is called a ring down or comma tail artifact, and it's similar, but it's not as excessive as the beeline artifact that you see from air. So a little sound gets into these little cholesterol filled sinuses, will bounce a little bit, create this little vertical artifact. This doesn't necessarily mean air, it just means that there's something there that is creating a little bouncy area for that sound to create this vertical artifact here. You can actually see this with metallic form bodies as well. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. The last artifact that I'm going to talk about is the mirror artifact. We typically see this when we're looking for plural effusions. So here I'm getting the view to identify a plural effusion, and then I'm going to get a view that's really good at demonstrating what a mirror artifact is. So let's say that you have a fluid-filled structure, liver or spleen, next to an air-filled structure. This is the lungs. This represents the diaphragm, even though technically it's the air, not the diaphragm itself. But if you notice, if you look on one side compared to the other side, they're basically a mirror image of each other. So let's take this little thing in the liver to talk about the mirror sign. So what happens here is the ultrasound beam will come down, reflect off that and come back up. It takes, we'll say X amount of time for that to make it back up to the transducer. And so the ultrasound machine generates an image at this distance from the transducer. Now, remember that interface between air and fluid is highly reflective. So another sound beam will come down, hit that reflective surface, hit that reflective thing, 
hit that reflective surface again and make it back up to the transducer. That sound signal making it back to the transducer takes, we'll say, X plus two amount of time. The ultrasound machine thinks that everything moves in a straight line. So because it took X plus two amount of time for that second sound signal to come back, it actually thinks that there's something on the other side of that diaphragm. And so it will create a mirror image. And that's how we get mirror artifact. That's it for this five minute Sono video covering part two of artifacts. I hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning.